Hey everyone, welcome back to another Interstellar Modeler. Hey everyone, I just uh, want to let you know that I am still working on my Mr. Spock diorama. Um, you know, Augie, he, uh, he builds models at warp speed while I chug along at impulse power. What can I say? <laughs> Anyways, my base is now complete and in this video I'm going to go over um, some of the steps I took to complete it and to make it look like it does now. And um, then all that is left is to paint Mr. Spock and there will be some video on that as well. Okay, so let's get started. primer to our desert plants again using Stino Res black primer which is a water-based acrylic polyurethane pretty durable and it cleans up easily I decided to base coat my plants using golden yellow um, I was inspired by some uh, real high desert plants that I've seen so that is the color scheme I chose for my uh, desert plants So next I wanted to add some orange um, to these desert plants. I start off with some model color flat red and I decided to mix that directly with some of the golden yellow that I still had in my uh, mixing cup. I also add a little bit of a Vallejo airbrush flow improver. Uh, the ratio is about one to two drops for every ten drops of paint. So you want to thoroughly mix this uh, paint and the uh, flow improver until you get a consistency that uh, will prevent any clogging in your airbrush. You can always add more flow improver if you need to. So when I'm doing uh, airbrushing like this, I always uh, lower the pressure on my uh, compressor to about 15 psi. That way I can get up close without um, splattering the paint or causing any pooling and I can add uh, details such as this um, only using my airbrush. And here you can see the uh, final results uh, of my desert plants. Again, the colors are entirely airbrushed. Okay, next it's time to uh, paint the tree. Uh, we're going to start off base coating the tree with some model air wood. This is applied directly over the uh, black Stino Res primer. So when airbrushing, uh, one of the keys to a, a good finish is to keep the airbrush moving constantly while you're applying paint. If you uh, leave it in one area too long, you're gonna cause pooling of the paint and going to get drips and things like that. Um, so always keep your airbrush moving. Okay next up it's time to uh, paint the leaves on a tree and I chose blue violet for uh, the color I wanted to use. Again, this is a kind of like detail painting, so I lower the pressure on the compressor uh, to give me better control of the paint. 
and also to minimize any overspray that I would have to clean up later. So once the base coat is done, I hand paint uh, shadow and highlights and applied some uh, model color wood grain over the bark to give it the finished look you see here. The snakes actually turned out to be one of the more challenging aspects of this build. So as you can see, the, uh, the snakes have some pretty significant seams that uh, need to be addressed. And uh, it would be challenging to sand those seams without uh, losing some of the detail in the scales. So I decided to use a epoxy sculpt to uh, cover those and maybe uh, blend it into the uh, texture as much as possible. So once the putty's in place, I go ahead and wet it down using my finger to uh, thin the putty and uh, hopefully blend it into the texture a little more. I use a wet paintbrush to further thin the edges, uh, trying to make the blend as seamless as possible. The same method is used to cover the seams on the underside of the snake. Again, we use a uh, wet paintbrush to further blend the putty into the surrounding texture. The idea is to feather the edges so that they uh, blend seamlessly in surrounding texture. So next I have to uh, restore some of the detail that we lose by applying putty to the seams and uh, the solution I came up with is using uh, my pen vise which has a diamond pattern that sort of replicates the scale pattern that is already on the snakes and these are the results. I mixed a custom color uh, to paint the interior mouths of the snake and I used uh, Vallejo beige for the snake's belly. I also painted the tongues using uh, Vallejo malefic flesh. Uh, painter's tape was applied to the back of the snakes to create the diamond pattern. Next, I apply some uh, Vallejo Olive Drab over the painter's tape uh, and over the entire uh, dorsal side of the snake. So next we uh, clean up the snakes uh, using a hand brush. Uh, 
I uh, eliminate any overspray, add some details to the teeth, to the gums, and to the eyes. And we also fill in the diamond pattern using uh, Vallejo Black. This pattern was created again using the painting tape that we applied earlier. Um, I also have the LED installed for the that's going to illuminate our phaser beam. And one final step is to apply some iridescent medium to the snake to uh, create a, a sheen and also uh, iridescence that um, some snakes actually have. This was actually inspired by a, a build Chris Cortell did on his Land of Giants uh, snake. Okay, so it's time to feed the wires uh, from our LEDs into the base. Uh, but before we do any soldering, I have to uh, create a water edge for our resin water. Uh, we do this with good old Elmer school glue. Uh, we apply a continuous bead of white glue that's going to act as a barrier for our, uh, our liquid resin that we're going to pour a little bit later in the build. So once that glue is uh, dry, we can turn the base over on its side and uh, solder our wires together. Um, I use the method that I was taught in the Air Force. So you always want to start off by uh, pinning your wires with solder. Um, just remember that your solder is always going to flow in the direction of your heat source. Once I have the wires tinned, I uh, bend the ends into a hook The wires are then combined uh, from the SMDs to the uh, uh, battery uh, wires. I gently crimp the ends together and then I do the same for the, uh, the negative side of the, uh, the power leads. Once you have the, uh, the wires uh, gently crimp together for a secure connection. You go ahead and apply your solder. And the last step is to apply some heat shrink over uh, your soldered connections to uh, add some protection um, to that solder joint and also insulate it. Once we have our uh, electrical connections done, we can turn the base back over and add our uh, resin water. You pour this uh, model water uh, slowly so that you don't create air bubbles into the center. And then you spread it out to the glue bead with a craft stick. Um, you want to keep your layers kind of thin. Um, the manufacturer uh, recommends no deeper than one eighth of an inch. And then you can uh, once that dries, you can repeat applications to add depth to your water.
this uh, resin water takes about 24 hours to fully cure um, you can add like I said additional layers once it's fully cured to add depth um, once it's done you get a pretty realistic uh, look um, for water Here you can see uh, what it looks like while it's still drying. And these are the final results. Uh, the base is complete at this point. Um, I do have uh, a phaser or replicated phaser beam installed in the snake. Uh, I use Plastruck fluorescent blue rod. I am not going to illuminate it yet. I'm going to wait for the finale to show you what that looks like. But uh, that's it for this video. In the very next video, we will uh, paint Mr. Spock. And uh, I'll go over how I paint him. And then we'll put him on the base.